So this is the Brooks Catamount 2, Brooks's new speedy trail runner. It is fast and it is fun. I spend a lot of time in different trail shoes, but I've never quite spent time in a shoe that does exactly what this shoe is doing. I think that Brooks is on the edge of an exciting new trail running trend. So just a quick disclaimer before we get a little further in, I do work at REI and these shoes were provided for review, but the opinions I'm gonna be sharing today are all based on my experience in the shoes. So the Catamount 2 is coming in at 9.7 ounces per shoe for men and 8.6 ounces per shoe for women. And they have a six millimeter drop. Pair that with a stack height that's pretty in between from a Brooks kind of trail lineup and you get a really responsive kind of, you know, a little bit lower to the ground, energy returning, fast trail running shoe. So you've heard me say it's the Catamount 2, which means it's only been around for two years. So this is a relatively new effort for Brooks. The Catamount sits kind of squarely in the middle of Brooks's line, right? Like you have the, um, no it doesn't, it sits on one <laughs> end of the spectrum. <laughs> so Brooks divides their trail lineup into light trail, mountain trail, and ultra trail. There's two options that fit into the ultra trail category. One of them is the Caldera, that so kind of gives you that max cushion feel. So if you're looking to kind of go longer distance, you're looking for longer times and really want a little bit of that sinking in feeling, that kind of like comfort, wider platform, then the Caldera is a good option for you. If you're like, yeah, I really want to kind of do those distances and spend that much time on the trail, but I kind of want a little bit more energy response. I want to pick up the pace a little bit more, maybe perhaps feel a little bit more nimble. Then that's where the Catamount steps in, which basically allows you to not sacrifice speed when you're out on the trail. If you're a longtime Brooks fan, you may remember some of the Pure line, which allowed you to kind of run a little bit closer to the trail, had a little bit less cushion. This is a little bit of that revisitation where it gives you that firmer feeling underfoot. Uh, but what's really cool about the Catamount series is it gives you lots more energy return. So if we take a look at the Catamount from top to bottom, the first thing I notice about the shoe is how cool I think it looks. <laughs> it just looks really rad. I think like the way they wrote Catamount in the back is just a really cool call out there. On this side of the shoe, there's these three little symbols there that I think almost feel like power badges or like special skills that the shoe can do. Like one of them's got a feather, which I think means really lightweight. One of them's got arrows pointing all the way up. I'm like, Maybe it could jump really high with these shoes. You know, certainly it feels like I can go faster uphill. And one of them's got like a circle with directions everywhere. And to me, that's just like, yeah, I can take the shoe anywhere. Lots of cool, really interesting design features on the upper part of the shoe. We have this kind of really tight knit mesh uh, upper and the top there, which is kind of cool because it feels really tear resistant. You can't see my fingers through there, which means that it's probably not super thin. You can actually feel that there's an inner layer in there. It's not super thick either, but certainly that second layer helps with the protection of rocks it just is like a more trail specific feature that layer actually extends down to the gusset of the tongue here just giving you exactly the amount of protection you need while not adding a lot of weight it isn't super low volume it isn't super high volume it's probably right around the middle there and you know the laces for me i like them a little bit long you can see here that i didn't have to heel lock tie but the laces are textured they're flat laces and i like a textured lace because it kind of just reminds me that like oh i'm going on a trail run so that's pretty cool do you think a texture though that it actually is a more secure tie? Oh, tie? Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's almost fun. like the laces have outsoles. <laughs> So another quick thing to call out is that there is a lace keeper here. So it's right at the end of the catamount call out. So if you usually tie your shoe and you find yourself with lots of lace left over after your preferred tie, you can pop your laces down there and keep them secure while you're going on the trail. Towards uh, the back of the shoe, we have the heel. There's a little bit of structure back there, but it's a lot softer up at the top. Giving you that gator trap in the back too, that's really popular for lots of folks. You can see as I pull mine back, there's a lot of dust coming off the shoes. I've used the shoes quite a bit. The story with the midsole is that it's made from DNA DNA flash, which is still nitrogen infused DNA, but they really dial in the amount of nitrogen and the amount of energy return you get from like, you know, say a DNA loft that's found on a caldera versus the DNA flash that is found on this fast shoe, um, the catamount, right? What Brooks was looking for in this compromise was energy return. And you certainly get that with this shoe. You'll feel a lot more of that bounce back quickly. You don't sink into the shoe as much there. The sky vault feature helps accentuate that picturing yourself just on that vault and then just bouncing right back up which is a cool way to have fun on the trail, but it's also a cool way to not lose speed on the trail. If we get down to the outsole, again, the call out for the DNA flash there, which is rad. Down here is the trail tack, which is familiar to folks that have run in Brooks Trail Runners before. And this is just a really sticky kind of outsole that you're kind of used to seeing. On the front part of the shoe, they're facing forward. On the back part, they're facing so that you can get a little bit more of a braking action there. Getting all the way to the edge with more of aggressive trail tread means that you can feel secure no matter what trails you're on. 
So for me, one of the most exciting things about the Catamount line is that it's new. Um, and it's a new, very intentional kind of line that's like, let's make a fast trail shoe. And you saw in the first version that it's like, yeah, maybe we can incorporate some road kind of elements in there and let's make that, you know, shoe a little bit faster by doing things that we know really well, right? And version two is like, yeah, let's do that, but let's make it more trailly. Let's make it kind of, you know, withstand a little bit more of that abrasion, uh, but let's not sacrifice any of the speed. And I think the Catamount 2 does that really well. So, you know, this is the Catamount 1. You can see a couple key differences for sure. First one I noticed is the laces. Like these laces, cool. These are great laces for road running shoes, in my opinion. They're, they're really soft. They're really comfortable. I don't think I'm going to feel that way when I'm trail running. I think I'm going to feel a little bit more like this, a little bit uneven, grittier. So I don't know. I, I kind of dig that the laces are updated to kind of get me into a frame of mind uh, for my run. The other big difference you'll notice is the upper. This upper kind of feels a little bit more of like a traditional, like airy mesh upper. You still can't see my fingers through there, but you can still see that it, it it is a little bit of a different perforation. The updated upper on the two is hydrophobic and it's made from recycled polyester, which is great. Basically, it just helps repel that water off your feet a little bit more in more varied conditions. So it's kind of nice that it's an elevated trail feature. On the inside, you're still gonna get a little bit of that like microfiber kind of feel. So you won't feel the kind of roughness. The big update is on the ride of the shoe or the midsole. So if you notice here, you don't see any call out for a sky vault. What you do have on um, the Catamount one was that rock plate in the middle. But what you're getting here is kind of a propulsion plate. You know, a rock plate gives you a little bit more of that responsiveness, a little bit more of that stiff feeling. But here you're really kind of getting into your forefoot and it's propelling you forward. And you have a little bit of that call out here. It's kind of telling you like, hey, you're going to feel this. So I kind of dig that they did update that. The last thing that I noticed uh, was just the lug design. The patterns are pretty similar, but you kind of notice on the Catamount one, it's got a little bit more of, uh, I don't, I just realized I don't know how to describe outsole tread. <laughs> like it's got this shape versus that shape. And what I think is different about the shapes is honestly that you can see that it's more aggressive and more directional in the Catamount 2. So it's very intentional, like, hey, we're moving this way. Uh, whereas the Catamount 1 seemed like it gave you lots of options to move laterally in different ways. Obviously still gonna be very grippy. They're still using trail tack. But I think, you know, even that update in the Catamount 2, it's more intentional for the direction you're moving in and it cut out a little bit more of the tread where you didn't need it. So a little bit more exposed EVA, even has a little bit more of the exposed EVA kind of towards the forefoot, just like a weight savings thing. Overall, I think they're features that I really welcome and I want to see what the evolution of the shoe is looking like because I think it's moving in a really cool and exciting direction. So I put about like, you know, 55 miles in the shoe, like kind of big adventure I was able to take these shoes on was the Wonderland Trail. So I actually did the Wonderland Trail around Mount Rainier, which is about 93 miles over three days. These were my day three shoes, which was pretty cool. And, you know, I was a little bit worried that my feet were going to be a little too swollen for the volume in the shoe. The first two days I wore shoes that had a little bit more volume in them. But I thought with my feet being tired after two really long days on the trail and my feet being swollen, I was like, well, am I really going to want a shoe that kind of gives me more energy return? Don't I want just like all the cushion I can get? And I was like, whoa, actually, I really like this. Like, even though my body's tired, it was kind of nice to just be like, you know, I was almost like brought back to life a little bit, like being sprung up by the shoes. So these shoes, I think, surprised me in lots of different ways. One of the things that they didn't surprise me with was that they would make me excited to go run on the trails. And for sure, I can see myself wanting to pick these up when I want to be really intentional about pace or if I don't want to be intentional. But the only thing I want to do is like, you know, I just feel like running as fast as I can to the top of that hill or uh, more realistically, running as fast as I can down this hill, you know, <laughs> um, then these are the shoes that I'll probably grab from now. So I think the Catamount is a great shoe for anybody that's looking to get on trails, but kind of have a little bit more nimbleness to their runs. I mentioned before that Brooks is positioning it as an ultra distance shoe, which is kind of interesting, right? Because like if it's built for ultra distances, it's built for less than ultra distances too. You can use a shoe in a lot of different ways, but I think where the shoe really excels is if you want to put the energy and the effort into kind of like, hey, I'm going to go faster. Hey, 
I'm going to go further. Hey, I'm going to jump higher. Like this is a really good shoe to have fun with. For trail racing shoes, it's really interesting to see which direction companies go. But I don't know that I've seen this direction yet. This almost feels like the Saucony Endorphin Speed on the roadside. It's a shoe that you can use as a daily trainer, but it's got like, you know, a midsole component that really gives you that speed kind of edge. So if you're looking to train, but train a little faster, race, but race a little faster, you can still go slow with the shoe. It has the cushion on it, right? So I actually think that this is taking lots of cues from what we're seeing in faster daily trainers on the road than it is in what we're seeing in faster racing shoes on the trail side right now. So that's my look at the Catamount 2, but I'd love to hear from y'all. Were you a big fan of the Catamount 1? What do you think about the updates to the second version? Are there other shoes that you think I should be trying that offer this similar style of experience? Leave a comment below. I'd love to read them. I don't know if you can like Velcro these together. Maybe hold them without a carabiner. Oh, look at that. Cool. Carry your shoes like that. Solid gator trap.